Yes. Yes, we repeat the first hour for a four-hour show. So if you have not figured that out yet, then you're not paying close enough attention. But thank you for asking. Exactly, yes. All right, uh, other questions? Yes, sir. The studio's pretty big. Big enough, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, how, how's our studios at the station? Nice. It's just a cave, huh? Fabulous. Fabulous. Yes, sir. That's an excellent question. I have kicked a documented 45 yard with, with no wind, actually, a tailwind. With on a tee, with nobody trying to block it, to watch it, after shaking at least twice as many good kicks of a as I've had. So, oh, uh, oh, the width of the field goals, the, 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 the uprights are a little bit narrower than pro, believe it or not. But the crossbar is only eight feet, so that's a little bit lower. <laughs> but it cleared it easily. <laughs> yes, sir. Tonight? <laughs> 12 minutes ago. Well, let's see. It's 8.38 Eastern Time. 7.38. I think I agreed to 6 to 8, and then we arrive and see the marquee. 6 to 9. And I'm like, what the hell? It's a time change. Well, I will not leave here tonight early. Tomorrow in the game, I may leave early, depending on the score. Yes, sir. What was the genesis? Jimmy Masterlock. Jimmy Masterlock was a creation of every Stanley Capper, hype master guy that comes on these shows Sunday morning promising to give you the one game that will save your season. And I'm not sure those guys are still around, are they? Oh, yeah. They're still around? Yeah, yes. Yes, sir. Oh, Lance Easley? That asshole? No. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. What am I wearing? That's a great question. <laughs> I'm wearing loose fitted clothing, so I don't have to show how slothful I've been in my eating and lack of exercise. But she's referring to the fact that whenever a woman calls the show to talk sports, and she's, you know, just in there, hey, talking sports, there's always that awkward pause, and I go, so, uh, what are you wearing? <laughs> Scott says, I can't believe you're saying that. Hello. So yeah, I'm, I'm not even wearing a belt. It's elastic sweatpants. Bye <laughs> bye belt. Yes, sir. Where am I at? What am I hauling? Was it you, Craig, who said that that bit was stolen from me? That was you. You claimed that that was a Kevin Matthews bit from WLUP in Chicago from back in the day. Fuck you, you're lying. <laughs> Hey, look, here comes Gitter. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Eric Gitter right there. Give it up for Gitter. The offense you've never seen one time during the draft. Uh, Captain Over Hunter, I believe, has the Jets. He always has the Jets. That's Barking. Captain Over's. That's Captain Over Hunter's play. Yeah, exactly. Barking dog. Okay, yes, sir. False. Question. Go ahead. Me and him? Oh yeah. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, Scott was at the radio station, 1999. Scott wormed his way in to radio by serving free food from the Cheesecake Factory when you were working at the Cheesecake Factory back in 1994. 93. So he'd take food to the station and said, hey, you know what, maybe I can, you know, board out for you guys, or maybe you do updates or something. So, there you go. Uh, next question, what do we got? Yes, sir. We've got to talk about when we got replaced on Fox Sports. That was great. Uh, they, went with, they went with Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Racists. <laughs> What about the guys who had a 
Oh, oh, this is great. So this is good because this is not on the air. I can tell this story. This is this this is a little behind the scenes stuff, you know. Everyone put your cameras down. So, so my yeah, put that down. So my so my agent calls me all frantic and he just blurts it right out. He's like, I, they're going with Stephen A. Smith. I'm really sorry about this. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. And I'm like, you're kidding me, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, so he tells me, and I think they let me stay on for one more day. I think they did. Or, or it was like one more day, and then I wrote a long blog post about, hey, you're not going to believe this, people, but they're replacing me and Scott and the guys with a completely unproven commodity after we've been doing great for the network for five years. I don't know what to say about this. I'm very sorry. Blah, blah, blah. It was not a short earth, you know, blog post. But then some genius, you know, in the idiot department that made the movie in the first place said, oh, yeah, God, we probably shouldn't have Zayden on the air for the remaining two and a half months when he's a lame duck envy. So they tell me, okay, well, you know, we'll pay you out for the rest of the year. You can go home. These suckers had to stay. <laughs> So you guys had to run it out to the end of the year. Sally and I were there in our victory formation, not a victory formation. Just kneeling down every day, running out the clock. We had to and get emails, and they said, well, are you going to talk about students? A lot. I had to turn on it, because he's home, and he's a black man. not to work. But then, you know, the first of the year came and I was out of the gig and uh, the payments ended. So, yeah, it's a short term thing. But, you know, Stephen A made it for one full year, let no months. And he, he really did not like getting up that early. I mean, who does like getting up that early? I bet most of you people get up even earlier than us to go do jobs that are far less fun and stupid. But, uh, you know, Stephen A was like, oh man, this is an early, everyday thing. So of course, you know, they reward that guy with, you know, more TV opportunities. So the guy keeps failing upwards, which is amazing. It makes me very envious that somebody with so little interesting takes on anything in sports can be so successful. But I tip my cap to him. So, so anyway, so they replaced me with him. He lasted 11 months. They replaced him with a team called Zach and Jack out of Indianapolis. They lasted about 11 months. And now they've got uh, Furman and Cottrell, no. Archel Hawkins and uh, this guy Furman, they're out of Cincinnati. I don't know those guys, you know, they're just trying to make a living, do a good job. I don't know if their show is any good, they're still there, but the asshat that got rid of us finally got, not fired, but demoted at Fox Sports Radio. Finally, it took like four years and three different failures in the morning show for him to get demoted, so there you go. That's a little slice of radio fun for you. <laughs> All right, who else here? Any other? Yes, sir. My understanding, you turned a family vacation into a golf vacation with your buddies, and if so, can you explain to the rest of us how that works? How do we pull that off? A family vacation into a golf vacation. Which one is this? Is this? My Valley. Oh, this is when this is when I left my wife and kids in Maine to go play Pine Valley, right? A month ago. Yeah. How did I do it? I said, bitch, I'm bleeding. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> yeah, I've been married 16 years, you know. <laughs> a, lot of the, a lot of the niceties of marriage, for those who have been married that long, start to fall away, if you know what I'm saying. No, no, I, you know what? It's, uh, it was her in-laws up there, and she was fine with it. I actually was going to leave early anyway, so it just kind of worked out. But, I mean, you play golf, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, well, do you have a family? Yeah. Okay, well, try that. <laughs> Repeat after me. Bitch, I'm leaving. <laughs> and then dunk. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Yes, my annual trip to Pinehurst. Malcolm J. McLeod. Yeah. Not for him, though. No. He missed his wife. <laughs> Less hilarious for him. No, we've never found Malcolm McLeod, although somebody claims to have found him. He was the guy whose boarding pass was grabbed 
you know, in a, in a rush by my buddy Mike McGowan, who just glanced at the ticket check-in as he cut in line in front of everybody to try to make his flight back home. And he's like just grabbing it. He grabbed his boarding pass and another guy with an eerily similar name, Malcolm McLeod, and didn't realize it until they were at the gate and decided, oh well, Malcolm's gonna have to take one for the team. And so he walked onto the plane and off they went. So I took the boarding pass of poor Malcolm McLeod, who we never met, and I framed it in a little box and put a trophy around it. So we play in his memory every year for missing his flight, we presume. And uh, we've never heard from him. So he's either pissed off or he doesn't care. I don't know. Yes, sir? Is Big Bang all-inclusive? Sure it is. <laughs> On your dime. <laughs> Include everything you want in it. No, no, St. Vegas is, I get a good rate, uh, a really good rate on hotels and where we're staying, which is usually the Hard Rock. Uh, it's been a Hard Rock the last couple of years. Um, and you get a nice little VIP area to watch the games uh, with me and Scott and some of the guys. And, uh, you know, a little, little tchotchke shirt, hat, ball, something like that. So uh, I'll have details on that. Hopefully shortly. Makes a great Christmas gift, ladies. It really does. <laughs> yes, sir. Charge. charge. Scott, what about charge? What about charge? Uh, we say this often. He is one of the nicest people on the planet Earth. And it's weird. He's a guy who spends his day studying fantasy, doing what? Backup anchoring as well in Minneapolis St. Paul doing both of his websites, and then taking abuse from the people that he gave crappy advice to on a Friday morning, not a job I'd often want. But he still maintains this really nice exterior. He's like a really good paint. I'm not really sure. How, how do we get hooked up with him? It's been years. Yeah, he's, uh, you know what? I, I don't know when his first appearance was on the nighttime show, but he, he's been with us forever. And he's, I mean, charge, you, you, you text charge in the morning, and he'll get back to you 20 minutes later. Here's what I think. Really good guy, and, and you know, he makes us laugh. His, uh, his one-liners are, are well-practiced. A little dicey at times, but well-practiced. Uh, this was just handed me Call Roger from Yahoo. I don't know a Roger. No, I'm not paying this, sir. No way. <laughs> hey, am I supposed to call somebody from Yahoo? Roger. There's no Roger at Yahoo. Thank you. Okay. Alright, what else we got here? Alright, anybody? Anybody? Yes, sir. I don't think we have any other plans. We'll just see how it goes. Yes, you're the special ones. God bless you. Thanks very much for coming out. Yes. Zero. <laughs> You're looking, you're looking at it, right? <laughs> you know, answer is not enough. It, it can always be more. I should theoretically be waking up at 3 a.m. for a 6 a.m. show and grinding away and getting everything in order, but you know what? Over the years, it's like we just got to get up in time to be awake and lucid, at least when the bell goes off at 6 o'clock. You know, I try to do a lot of stuff beforehand, the day before, the night before, but there's always stuff, you know, when the season is going that happens overnight, and so you kind of you know, wake up and you find out, you know, what happened in these games and watch all the highlights. So, um, the general rule of thumb they say in radio is two hours of prep for every hour on the air. No. I'm not doing that. Because of the time slot, too, watching is our best prep, and then when we talk to each other before the show, he always says to me, See this, you see this, and I'll say yes, and, and then I'll start to talk about it. And like, ah! No, 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 no. Scott says, "No, I didn't see that. I was at three soccer games, a swimming meet, and one of my four dogs puked on the couch." But I'll watch it right now. Yes, yes, sir. Brad Gray is a guy. He's a listener who volunteered to track every home run and do all the grunt work that Solly was tired of doing for the home roll. And so he sort of outsourced that to a, a real baseball nerd who in exchange for us, you know, mentioning his website, uh, does that for us every day. Yeah, I skip it every now and then. I'm like, you know, baseball. 
Uh, yes, sir. Huh? Look at me, sir. <laughs> no need for TV. <laughs> yes. Are you at home when you did a radio show, or are you in the studio? No comment. Next question. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Right over there. How many times has upper management come back to you at, on some of your comments at times? Mm -hmm. Is there like an average per month? You know, luckily, Yahoo is very hands off on this guy. <laughs> Yeah, they're very, they're very good, and I really appreciate that in them because, uh, you know, there, there, there's, there is a trend now in sports radio of just increasingly homogenized, mainstream, let's not rock the boat, all we can't say that, you know, so to allow us to do our show, and to be irreverent and to be out there a little bit on the edge is great. I think that, you know, the, uh, the marketplace of sports radio needs that, so that's good. All right. All right. I think we've addressed it. Oh, damn. This is like a shareholders meeting in the back. Are you getting the market share this year? No, we're not getting the market share. Go ahead, sir. No, thank you. I'm good on my beers, actually. I've had quite a few, as a matter of fact. I haven't eaten yet, as a matter of fact. So, anyway, uh, we're going to turn the games back up. Our prediction for tomorrow Packers 35, Redskins 20. Hey! Yes. Uh, uh, we're going to hang around uh, for a while now, and uh, I think there's some food still left, maybe, perhaps. Again, thank you to the entire staff, both here at Tanner's, where I didn't get to get Bruce. Thank you very much. I have Bruce in the building right now, the owner, but thank you. And uh, thank you guys, and uh, we'll be there Monday morning at the station. Thank you guys for having us. And uh, I didn't even get to go in the pool out back. Is the pool still open? <laughs> Can I rent some swim trunks to go out to the pool? <laughs> but anyway, thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. Uh, for anyone who wants a photo, say hi.